Okay. Good evening, everybody. How are you today? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you again for another session in the doctrines. Thank you for even the, the few people that are present. And we know that you are going to teach us the same way. May your Holy Spirit get the word uh, with truthfulness to us and help us to understand everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, this uh, doctrine is one that you've never or maybe almost never heard of. Okay, it's called the laying on of hands. So let's read the text in Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1 through 3 just so that we can be on the same page. Okay, Hebrews 6, 1 through 3. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. What is the laying on of hands? So far, I believe that you guys have accepted that everything that we've been seeing is in the Bible as the, a doctrine to learn, right? And so Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1 through 3 is definitely the passage that lists all the elementary principles of Christ. I know how I introduced everything to you guys and I know how I demonstrated everything I taught you by showing you scripture, right? So now because we're gonna talk about the laying on of hands, I have to lay it before you, okay? I have to go back to Genesis and show you that it's there. And we will uh, increase in knowledge, uh, you know, in the future, well, in the next sessions, okay? But now let me show you that the doctrine on the laying on of hands is right there throughout the, the, the Bible and in particular in Genesis. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27 is the mention of the sixth day when God created man, right? But it says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So then, if we are created in God's image, where is the dirt? Where is the dust? Or where is the material that will help us to keep up with God's environment? right because hey nature is about uh, matter right it's about things that you can touch but god says let us make men in our image if we have to believe jesus and we have to believe jesus god is spirit john 4 24. so if god is spirit or is a spirit so we know that spirits don't have flesh as it were okay so then in being in the image of god could mean so far that we were created as spirit beings okay and no flesh well so then how do we have dominion 
over material things. Well, God specified it right then and there that we were to have dominion over everything that is material. So then it's perfect. We understand it, but where is the beef, right? <laughs> okay, so then we can be, as they say in politics, out of touch if we don't understand what the material is, what the animals are feeling or what the things that are material are feeling. So that's why we need more than just created in God's image according to his likeness. Because so far, we don't know what God's image or God's likeness is, right? But we will take this because God said it. But we want more as human beings, okay? And so, only the thing that can help us so uh, to get that truth will be something material being made so that we can know for sure that we will have dominion over the fish of the sea the birds of the air etc and listen the word dominion itself is a big word which is what let me show you what the word dominion is it is a big word it means to have supremacy to have ascendancy to have dominance okay dependency okay you see so so many words right control how do you have control it's not just mind control you have to be able to touch things well guess what we find that in the bible so let me take this out of your sight and let's talk about dominion and all of that so we understand that we were created in god's image but we want more so god created man in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female he created them then god blessed them okay now we're getting closer because we're hearing that god blessed them when we bless the congregation at the end of any meeting do you guys realize that we always put our hands up if somebody does not put his hands up as he blesses the congregation it means that the person doesn't know how to bless point blank okay because blessing someone means putting your hands on the person or you know uh stretching your hands toward the person something we will see later okay as we continue studying this thing so even we pastors or priests or uh, deacons whatever we are when we are pronouncing the blessing it's not just with words but we put our hands up etc well do you know it's the same thing we do even when we're saluting the the flag so what is that saying what does that signify well we will study those things later but so far you know and i know that when we bless somebody or when we're saying goodbye or good morning etc there are hand gestures involved but because we don't see here in verse 28 that it says that god put his hands on the man and bless him or on them and bless them we will just wait until we see something more tangible are you with me so god says he blessed them and also we see he said to them so you see it's two different things to be blessing somebody or to be gesturing and to be saying right so far so good we're not going to just take the bless for anything we're gonna continue to find out 
where hands were laid on people because we're seeing the laying on of hands. But as I'm trying to do, it's implied in those verses, but because it's not stated, I'm not going to uh, make it a, a point to make you believe it, okay? Now, we're going to consider Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, because now in this one, we see, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. That's what I was expecting. That's what I was waiting for, for God to be in touch or to touch <laughs> the dust that we are so that he can bless us better, right? Okay, we're coming to that. And look at how beautiful this statement is. So the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. That's the material so that you can deal with the material world that God has had created. And now listen to the anointing. Men received the anointing because God had said, you will have dominion over the stuff that I've created. And God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Okay, I'm going to take you a little away from this so that you can see that this thing is huge. You see, when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan, what happened to him? the Holy Spirit breathed, right? And then he went on and he said, oh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he had anointed me, okay? Also in John chapter 20, after Jesus's resurrection, what did he do to his disciples? He breathed on them and he said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, you see? And then he, he, he added, you know, guys, anyone whose sin you forgive, heaven will listen and forgive that sin too. If you retain the sin, heaven will listen and will retain it too. In other words, they were fully anointed. But Jesus says, there is more coming. Wait for the power, okay, from on high, etc. So you see? Forming the disciples was one thing. He formed them for three or three and a half years, right? That's forming them, giving them shape, teaching them what they needed to know. But until he put his hands on them and told them, now you can go, they were not yet anointed. They were not yet sent. And so, what does the laying on of hands do? Exactly that. But I'm not going to be ahead of myself. I'm going to go back to this Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Okay. And tell you that this was an intimate moment that man had with God. Being formed by God. Okay. All the intricate parts of his being, the naturalness. Now, God touch every bit of it. Well, so God wasn't out of touch, nor did he want the human that he had formed to be out of touch. Okay? I hope you guys understand. So, you see, nothing happened just in the New Testament or in a vacuum. Everything was well designed by God and started way back. Don't believe me yet. Let's keep on going. So God did not give us any surprise. So we're dealing with the doctrine of the laying on of hands. You know, we are all blessed in Abraham because God in Genesis chapter 12, called Abraham and made him a lot of promises and told him that 
the whole earth will be blessed through you. And so Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3, says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And uh, you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Did you hear the word bless? Those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Wow. What is missing in those promises to Abraham? To have full dominion. I'll answer this one for you, but not the others. It is an encounter with God so that God could put his hand on Abraham somehow. Okay? Because until God's hand touches you, you don't have hands laid on you yet. Now, let me try again. Until hands are laid on you, you are not imparted anything yet. Uh, let me try again. Until there is a hand laid on you, you are not commissioned yet. <laughs> okay, you will find out that is true for all these things that we're going to see even today as well as later. Okay, so Abraham so far had not yet met the Lord per what we can read so far. So the Lord says, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, it almost happened in Genesis chapter 14. And I'm saying it almost because there is no mention of hands per se, but I'm going to show you it's there. Because Abraham now had a war to deliver his nephew Lot from uh, the kings that were warring. And then on his way back, he encountered Merhi Sedek, but it means uh, my king is righteous or a king of righteousness, right? Melchi means my king. Sedek means righteousness, okay? So, and he was also king of Salem or king of Shalom. Oh, that means king of peace. Who on earth do you think this person was? <laughs> if you go and read Hebrews chapter seven you're gonna see that was jesus okay that met him on his way back how do we find out that is true let's read and you'll see Melchizedek, king of salem okay that also already gave him away he brought out bread and wine <laughs> Who do you think always makes alliances with people with bread and wine? Okay, now I'm waiting for an answer. Who does that? Jesus. Exactly. Okay, when we take the Holy Communion, what do we say? Oh, that Jesus said, this is the blood of the covenant, the alliance in my blood. You know, this do in remembrance of me, right? So way back before he came, he used to take communion with his people. Okay, you see that? It's right there. And then he was the priest of God most high. <laughs> Who on earth do you think that is? Who is our sovereign priest? Jesus, right? So, guess what he says? He says, blessed be Abraham of God most high. And I'm sure at this stage, because he was very close to Abram, 
he was like this, blessed be. Take a look at any Jewish person or anyone from the Middle East or from the East. When they are blessing, you will see that they go like this. These things have come down to the generations. So, possessor of heaven and earth. Although hands might have been raised there, I will not make it the doctrine yet. I'm just showing you that people used to bless people. Let's continue. If you are like me, you will want more evidence, right? So, Genesis chapter 14, verse 20 now. And blessed be God most high. Okay, he was also blessing God most high. Usually, how do people bless God again most high? Okay, by raising their hands, right? But we're not going to say it yet. Let's see what happened. Who has delivered your enemies into your hand? So there was God's most high hand, and there is also Abraham's hand. But we are not going to make it a doctrine yet. And Abraham now used his hand to give him a tithe of all. That's interesting. Okay, that's it. That was his response, right? He paid his tithes. Oh. So if you pay tithes, to whom do you pay tithes? To God. Let's continue. Genesis chapter 25, verse 11, give us a better picture at this stage. Because we did not hear anything of Abraham blessing his son Isaac. I'm not saying he did not do it. But we don't find a text that says it clearly to us. Except that I know that he blessed him with a death so that he can live forever. You know that, right? So he, when God says, offer me your son as a sacrifice, he did. And because of that, guess what? The children of Israel as a nation can never die because they died in that patriarch's life they died they died in isaac okay that's why no matter what you see happening to them they will not disappear from the face of the earth because they died already case in point they died their language died and resurrected hebrew died the language hebrew died and came back to life even I have a little bit of it, right? So you see, Jesus died and rose again. So they cannot destroy Israel's heritage on the physical level. They cannot destroy it on the spiritual level. <laughs> you see? All right, let's continue. So I'm not going to take those yet as full proof of anything. But when I hear in Genesis 25 verse 11, that it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac. Ah, that caught my attention because, because Abraham did not do it, you know, blessing his son, etc., except that he gave him everything that he had. That's the way to bless. But because he did not pronounce anything, we did not hear of him putting his hand, etc., so even that, I won't take as if it was black on white. But we know that, that God blessed Isaac. So God promised the blessing to Abraham. Now God blessed Isaac. Ha, ah, we're getting somewhere, right? So afterward, we learn that Isaac blessed his son Jacob. Let's see how he did it. Genesis 27, verses 21 through 29. Some background information so that we can go together. At this stage, Isaac is about to die. So he sent his son Esau, Edom, to go and hunt 
and bring him some savory food that they used to go hunt together and eat together, right? So Esau heard that and Esau hurried to go to hunt that thing. But Rebecca, their mother, heard that thing and she wanted to give the son she loved the blessing instead of Esau. She did not like Esau at all. So she wanted Jacob to have the blessing. And, and guess what, people? Before they were born, God had already said, oh, yeah, Jacob will be the superior guy. But they were not able to wait for God's timing. And so they were fighting to get the blessing. You know what? God loves that. God loves when people are, and listen to me right, when people are violent about the things of the kingdom. All right. Now, why is it that we don't have everybody online tonight? They are not violent. They are not violent for the things of the kingdom. But if they heard that Jeff Bezos was hiring people at $25 an hour, but the person has to be this, that, or the other, you will find out how many would be lying about their resume, etc., so that they could get there. But you have something that's giving people something eternal and you don't find people violent about it. So Jesus said this. He says, you know what? <laughs> Ever since John the Baptist to this day, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. So as you listen to my voice, I'm saying to you guys, be violent about the things of the kingdom. So Jacob wanted to be the, the, the superior guy and he, he achieved it. He achieved it through tricks. He achieved it by way of even causing God to bless him. We're going to find those verses even here. And guess what? God did not mind, except that God took his will from him and, and bend it a little to tell him, listen, you don't have to do this to be blessed because I can bless you if you attach yourself to me, right? So we will do that. We will attach ourselves to the Lord so that we can be blessed. We don't have to take people's place or things to be blessed. Okay, we don't have to envy anyone to be blessed. Okay, so now verse 21. Jacob was suspicious because he heard, Papa, I got the food for you. And he says, uh, who is this? He says, this is Esau. Now, this is Jacob identifying himself as Esau. That's so bad. Because if a name doesn't belong to you and you take it, you're setting yourself up for trouble because the person you envy or you envy the position of is not that happy. Forget joyful, okay? So never want to be somebody else. Just be yourself. So now he identifies himself as Esau. And then the father says, come closer. Let me feel you. Okay, now we see his hand is going to be on Jacob's hand or on Jacob's body, no matter what, right? So far, we're, we're seeing hands being laid. So Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, Oh, my goodness, you have the voice of Jacob, but the hand are the hands of Esau. And guess what? He was ready to be blessed. So he did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hand. So he blessed him. Now we see hands are laid and the father blessed his son. Okay, you guys that are with me, father or mother, Remember, when you have children, to bless them. It's very important. I know 
what you may be saying. Well, me, my parents used to say, you will never amount to anything, etc. Yes, and that is the reason why when, even when we go high, sometimes we fall because our parents have madishone for so long or have pronounced curses more than they pronounce blessings. Well, guess what, people? God knows about this thing. That's why he says, you know what? Honor your father and mother <laughs> in the Lord, okay? It's, it's tough, but <laughs> manage to do it to avoid them cursing you. Because if they curse you, you will be cursed. If they bless you, you will be blessed, okay? So keep this as your own secret. Just obey them whenever they, they want something or they, they tell you to do things, etc. until you depart, okay? So play the game right. Otherwise, you guys will be victimized, okay? Love everybody, even when they curse you. Because when you do that, you win, okay? All right, I'm telling you, <laughs> all those things are in the Bible, but I'm using a human language to repeat them to you, okay? Okay, but anyway, take a look at this thing. So he put his hands on Jacob, thinking it was Esau, and he blessed him. He asked him a second time in verse 24, are you really? my son Esau. And he said, I am. Okay, you guys know how many times Peter, the disciple, denied Jesus. How many times did he say he did not know Jesus? Anyone? Three times. Yes. Now, when Jesus returned, how many times he made him say, I love you, Jesus? Yes, correct. Three times. Three times. Okay, why? Because it has to balance. In the balance, his denial was like this. It's like, and the, the love for Jesus was down. So Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? He says, yes, Lord. And it was like this. He says, do you love me? He says, yes, Lord. It was like this, almost. Do you love me? He says, yes, Lord. Boom, ha, now Peter wins. Okay, that's what Jesus did. So you see, Jacob was asked the question twice. The first time he says, I am Esau. Okay, the second time his father says, are you really Esau? He says, yes, I am. That's a problem. And that needs to be revoked for as many times he had done it. Okay, what am I telling you? You see, if you make a mistake twice, make sure you give double or more. Don't do just one. Don't apologize just once, okay? Because you want to buffet that foolishness that you did, all right? I don't know if I'm making sense to you, but... <laughs> Take my word, I mean, take the Bible's word for it because Jesus did not have to do it three times because he denied him three times, okay? But he did because Jesus knew what he was doing. Well, you're gonna see something like this here. So he says, yes, I am. So he says, okay, I'm gonna eat the food now and I'm going to bless you. And indeed, Jacob came and he was blessed by his father. His father even went closer to him. He said, mm, okay, yeah, even your scent or <laughs> your, your odor <laughs> or your smell, right? That is that of Esau. Because, you know, when people are in the, in the, the forest or whatever, the woods doing things, my goodness, they can have some smell, right? So Jacob was used to that. So he smelled him and says, okay, yeah, that's you, Esau, you know? So they decorated that guy well for him, right? And so he blessed him. Okay, listen to what he says. May 
God give you the dew of heaven. Whoa, the fatness of the earth. Whoa, I don't even have to listen to everything he says. So he says, whether it's things from heaven or things from the earth, may you have it all. May people serve you. All nations bow to you, etc. So if all nations will bow to you, Esau or Edom will be a nation also. So the Edomites will have to bow before the Israelites big time. <laughs> Why? Because the father laid hands on him and blessed him according to that. So, okay. And then he added, cursed be ev anyone or everyone who curses you. So you see why any nation that mess with the Israelites will, will be cursed. So you guys may not think it is that important, but you have to, to see the reaction of Esau's father and Esau when they found out that Jacob had stolen the blessing. Blessing. You know, apparently it's just words that you say, right? So why is that important? Well, because it has always been important. What? Words. Why? Because it is by words that God created everything. <laughs> so you see, that alone makes word important. It is by word or the word of God that God saves the world. Now you still think that words are not important? It is by way of words that I was pronounced whatever when I graduated. You guys too. It's just words that make your parents married, husband and wife. What? It's not the, the ring. So it's important. Well, the words of blessings are important also. Genesis 27, verse 30. As soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, that Jacob had scarcely gone out from his presence, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. And he also bought the food and says, hey, dad, here, here it is. The father said, what, what do you mean here it is? I already ate it. He says, no, I didn't give you anything. And see what happened. Isaac trembled exceedingly. Now you would say, okay, he trembled because they, they fooled him. Okay. What about Esau? Huh? Esau cried exceedingly. Uh, okay, because uh, somebody listened to some words that were not important. No, <laughs> Esau is teaching us something here that if your parent or parents bless you, you're blessed. Words are important, people. So he cried with a bitter cry and he says, Father, bless me also but he says your brother came with deceit and has taken away your blessing whoa whoa so if somebody gets the blessing first that person is blessed because you cannot pronounce the uh, two blessings on the on two different people the uh, two of the same blessing. Hmm. So, do you think this can still happen today? Answer me. Do you think that your brother can take away your blessing or anyone can take away your blessing? Answer. Renesha. Yes. Okay, what was the question? Can you repeat it for, for the Garen family? You said if someone could take your blessings away from you like these days. Like, nice. During like this time, not in the past. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, now what's the answer, guys? Can can somebody steal your blessing? No. Oh, yeah. Why, why not? <laughs> yeah. Just died for you, right? Huh? You you is that right? Okay. Well, guys, you have to go with what the Bible says, okay? Uh Cameron says yes, and he's right. Listen to what Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. And he said this to the church of Philadelphia, or the church of those who love him or like him, <laughs> right? He says, uh, verse, uh, verse 10, chapter 3, because you have kept my command to persevere keyword persevere i also will keep you from the the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth so the trial will come to how many people the whole world that means Christians and non-Christians alike. So the trial is for everybody who is on the face of the earth. Okay, that's Jesus talking. Verse 11. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have. Why? So that no one may take your crown so can somebody steal your blessing <laughs> yes uh, you'd better believe it so if somebody tells you oh well no what god has done it's your destiny uh, listen those things are good for hyping us you know uh, yeah you know uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that you see even that verse or those verses are taken out of context and mistreated let me let me say it to you and you can go and verify no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rise against you in judgment take a look at who will take care of it you shall condemn why because this is the inheritance of the servant of the lord <laughs> you see that you see who will condemn those tongues but you cannot condemn the, the tongues if you did the thing, if you are guilty of it. So if the tongue, you know, raises against you in judgment because of things you did, you cannot condemn that. So it's not God who's going to condemn that tongue for you. It's your inheritance because of what? You're righteous. You receive your righteousness as an inheritance from the Lord. So now you can stand firm because you have truth as a belt etc you okay all right so let me continue it, it, just in case somebody says no well nobody can take your crown but listen to what jesus says again in matthew 8 verses 10 to 12. when jesus heard it he marveled uh, because somebody had faith in him right and he says oh Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you guys that many will come from east and west and will sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. And there, they will regret it a lot. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, is Jesus preaching something false here? 
<laughs> he knows he's the king of the kingdom and he says this so we have to be very careful he says the kingdom of god suffers violence and the violent take it by force let's be violent okay let's not regret anything okay we're gonna stay put laying on of hands and Jacob's take on that. Genesis 32. You know that Jacob wrestled with a man, okay? Earlier we saw Abraham with a man, Melchizedek, who was none other but Jesus Christ before he came, okay? Ah, do I have to tell you this big word that they have coined to explain that? The Theandropos, Theandropos like the God man. That's, that's us trying to put a word on what Jesus was before he came in the flesh as Mary's son, okay? Theandropos meaning Theo, meaning God, and then Andropos is, is the word for man. You know, so you say the God man, the Andropos. Does that make you more saved? No. But if somebody says it, you you will not be like, ah, ah you know, you know, that doesn't make you smart either, according to the kingdom. So that man was Jesus who wrestled with him, and he understood it. It was God Himself wrestling with him, etc. And he wanted God to bless him. Ah, Jacob was no loser. He knew what he wanted. So now he's done getting his blessing from his father. Now he's waiting for God to bless him too. <laughs> and he doesn't let up, right? So he, he kept on fighting with the man that was wrestling with him. And he says, you need to bless me. Now the man says, listen, let me go because the day is breaking, you know. But he says, no, I will not let, let you go until you bless me or unless you bless me. Bless you. That means what? Putting my hand on you like your father did and say good things to you. So Jesus asked him or God asked him, right? Verse 27. Okay, what's your name? Hey, you remember that thing earlier, guys? <laughs> what's your name? And he says, Jacob. Now he identified himself as who he is, right? And uh, he says, okay, your name shall be no longer Jacob because with that name you've stolen people's stuff, right? <laughs> your name will be Israel. Where is that? Genesis 32, verse 28, right? And then he says, you know why your name will be Israel? Because as Jacob, you've struggled with man and you've won. But now as Israel, you struggled with God and you are forcing me to bless you because you, you don't let go. I like that. You know, that's the way God was putting it. And then, Guess what? God says, you have prevailed. Verse 29. And Jacob asked, okay, now I want to know your name. Why? Because the name is important. The name of the person who blesses you is important. The person's age is important. The person's allegiance is important. Everything about the person is important. But we, we, we will find that in the next sessions jacob now wants to know his name he says okay why do you want to know my name he simply blessed him and got out of there right so jacob was like whoa this is the face of god this is penny l penny l 
ok? It's like, I've seen the face of God. It, that's what he called the name of the place, Peniel. So it means God's face. And he says, man, but how could that happen? I've seen God's face and I did not die. Yeah, because you're God's man, okay? Because now he received the blessings from both man and God, right? So he is well positioned to bless others. If you don't have blessings for yourself, you cannot bless anyone. If somebody without blessing tries to bless people, what will the people get? Nothing, because you don't have it for yourself. You cannot be lacking peace and giving peace, okay? So it's the principle, right? Natural one. What will God do? Because Jacob had lied twice. Genesis 35 verses 9 and 10. Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore, but Israel will be your name. So he called his name Israel. Do you see how God managed to revoke that curse that he incurred from his brother? Because now that Jacob is imbued with power, from man and God, he can bless somebody, right? His son, Joseph, was blessed by the Pharaoh of Egypt. How did Pharaoh bless Joseph again? Who can answer that? His hands? Yes. Okay, all right. No, he, he blessed him with a position of authority. These are the things that we can call a blessing. Like, People have their, their child. Don't they, they call the child sometimes a blessing in disguise? You know, you have a good job. You are, oh, that's my blessing from the Lord. God bless me with that, right? So he gave him the, a position next to him, the position of authority to be uh, the second in command in Egypt. So he blessed him. Now, Jacob went to Egypt to see his son yeah, as the second in command in Egypt. So uh, Joseph brought Jacob to Pharaoh or brought Pharaoh to, no matter what, how you put it. And then Jacob blessed Pharaoh. How do you think he did? Well. He put his hand on Pharaoh's head and says, you know, I bless you. Thank you so much for what you, do, you did for my son, for preserving the life of my children or that nation, etc." Okay. Now, Pharaoh was curious. Pharaoh, Pharaoh says, how old are you? <laughs> of course, he could not answer that well, okay? If you read the story, that's in Genesis 47, verses 7 through 8. But what is of interest to me, and that's the one that I'm going to stop after I make you see it, it is that Jacob, since he received the blessing that was for the firstborn, whereas he was the second, he too went to Egypt and where he was now with his son, Joseph, who had two sons, and he blessed them the same way. Okay, now you're gonna, you guys are going to read the whole chapter 47 for us until next time. Okay, so if you have any questions, ask them. Uh, okay, I have a question. In the story about um, Jacob and Esau, wasn't the mother on side with Jacob on trying to get the blessing with the father? Yeah. You know why? Because 
parents are like that, you could find that, uh, well, I'm just gonna say it, but I, I wish it's not the, the truth. You could see that your father so loves you that anything he brings into the house, he was like, Christelle, Ngoti, Ngoti ice cream la, or something, you know? But whenever he does that, it's like, Justin may be looking and like, uh, Justin doesn't eat ice cream <laughs> or drink ice cream, right? So now why does it, why would he do that? Well, for the same reasons we have our preference in life in so many ways. If you are more obedient to him or you help him more, or, or if he says something, you're ready to help. Well, you're gonna get his love in return. Not that he doesn't love Justin, but it is what some songs say, love is paid by love, all right? So now listen to this. Some people say, well, you know, God doesn't have uh, children that he loves. Ah, that's almost true, but it's not. Okay, now will somebody tell me whether we believe that Jesus was God on earth? No. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So if God, right, <laughs> okay. Didn't we read somewhere the disciples that Jesus loved? <laughs> so Jesus loved somebody more than the others, right? Yeah. So in his humanity, he loved some people or the family that Jesus loved, the family of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. That's, that's, those were his family, as opposed to his own brothers and sisters that kept on disrespecting him, etc. He loved them anyway. He even loved his enemies. But there is a particular love that he, he showed toward John that he did not show toward the others. What about God himself? God, or our father, or before he came in the flesh? Did he love somebody and did not so much love another? Yes. He says it in Malachi chapter 2 that Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. You know, so does God love? Yes, the Bible keeps on saying in all the Psalms that we read, they always say the same thing. God loves the righteous and he hates those who do evil. You see? So in other words, Rebecca had her love for, uh, for Jacob because Jacob was the stay at home boy or the mama's boy. He used to be ready to help mama in the kitchen and stuff like that. But Mr. Esau used to be out with his father hunting and doing, doing men things, you know? So that's why that thing happened, okay? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have nothing else to, to say, except that uh, I hope you hold on until at least we have covered all the biblical doctrines, because you cannot advance in your Christian faith if you don't know these elementary principles okay that's why many people cannot go further than a few sermons that they have heard or they cannot be established by any means because today they may be a pentecostal tomorrow they're seventh day adventists and stuff like that why because they don't don't know what is essential and also the worst thing is that somebody can come your way and because the person has some excellent speech 
or excellent way of explaining things. Even when the person takes you outside the Bible, you won't even know you're already in danger of following some foolishness, okay? So me so far, I make sure you see things from the biblical perspective and you stay in what's written, okay? And what's written is that you need to know about the doctrine of the laying on of hands, all the others, okay? So please guys, if you did not understand something, go back and listen to them and etc. and be, be sure that you know what you know, okay? All right, okay. Sister Christelle, can you pray for us? Okay, Bye. has to close your eyes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day, Lord. Thank you for letting us be here and to hear your words and to know you more, Lord, to be able to know your grace, your faith, and your love as your love endures forever, Lord. Yes. Thank you for giving us the chance to walk with you, Lord, and to be with you, Lord. Thank those who have yet to know you who will find a way to find you, Lord. Thank you for letting us make it through the day just to be here, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Okay. Thank you all for being here and see you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, my dear brother. And so you guys need to stay put and we're going to conquer together in Jesus' name. All right. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. Amen. All right. Okay. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Okay, bye-bye. Good night, everyone. Good night.